Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast that explores the movies that influenced how we view love and romantic relationships. Yes, there will be spoilers. I'm your host, Diana Rodrix Connard. The dearest love in all the world is waiting somewhere for me. We're talking about Cinderella from 1997, and I am very happy to welcome Steffi from the YouTube channel, In My Humble Opinion, and the Diva Dailies podcast. Hi, Steffi. Hello. I am so excited to be here with you, to be part of this podcast episode, to talk about Cinderella. Um, Wow. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Yes, yes. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And thank you for picking Cinderella. I I should also let the the listeners know that not only did you pick Cinderella, you gave me a list, (laughs) a list of movies and also like television episodes. And I'm just like, this is amazing. And yeah, oh my good. I get a choice. No, I don't want a choice. Okay, fine. I'll pick a choice. Okay, okay. And I, I, I went with this was actually part of a specialized category of okay. um of of you had picked movies that were part of, you know, uh you watched when you were younger. So I'm like yes. if I'm going to betray my whole idea of the movies that influenced us because I really really want to watch this movie, I would be doing a disservice to <laughs> the podcast as a whole. So yeah, Cinderella 1997, you 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 added this to your list and thank you for letting me pick something, but what what made you put this on here on the list in general? Oh my gosh. Okay, so where to begin? I feel like a large reason why I honestly chose Cinderella is because if anyone who follows me on the internet, be it through my YouTube channel or through my podcast, they know that I'm a very, very, very big Whitney Houston fan. In fact, I am literally wearing a Whitney Houston shirt at the time of recording this podcast (laughs) so we could just like you know summon her energy and her light into this conversation so she was a huge reason why I wanted to talk about Cinderella secondly I thought it would be worth revisiting Cinderella because it just came to Disney plus a couple months ago yes which there's actually a significance to the date in which it came so right Cinderella came to Disney Plus in February, which is, as we all know, Black History Month here in Mm -hmm. at least the United States. But it also specifically came on February 12th and February 11th, which is like the day before, is Brandy's birthday. Mm -hmm. But it's also Whitney Houston's death anniversary day. So there is a significance around that date. So I was like, "Hmm, this okay, this seems like fairly relevant to... Mm -hmm talk about for your podcast and then I just think in general Cinderella as a story is interesting to analyze especially given the conceit of your show so that that was the one two three punch of why I ultimately went with uh, Cinderella oh my god keep swinging if you're talking about the punches (laughs) oh my god no amazing and and this is where this is where I uh a small nod to your show. I humbly present this information. <laughs> I have never seen this movie before. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, I knew I knew about it, um, and a lot of things had to come come back to me because I I had um, a younger niece in my teenage years who watched oh. the Disney cinderella over and over and over again so i'm just like yep cinderella definitely the thing with the blue gown and the thing and the prince and the blah 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 so Uh um i i don't know too much of the history behind there and if anyone uh does take my advice and and definitely go check out in my humble opinion and the diva dailies podcast there is going to be a lot of information coming about the the behind the scenes i i actually i'm crossing my fingers but i'm not putting you on the spot right now for it if you brought that i will be very very excited at some point i feel like diva dailies we have we will be doing Ah! an episode about cinderella like because there's just so many divas in Mm. this movie it's just Mm -hmm. the perfect kind of thing to talk about for the podcast (sighs) but um thank you for the shout out Oh, that. absolutely. And in fact, I'm going to use that as an excellent segue for the cast itself. So uh, this movie stars the aforementioned Brandy as Cinderella uh, and also Whitney Houston as the fairy godmother. Um, there is also Bernadette Peters, 
Vianne Cox and Natalie Dizelle as the stepsisters and stepmother accordingly. Uh, Paula Montalban as the prince. Jason Alexander and Whoopi Goldberg and Victor Garber are the king and queen, respectively. Right. What a cast. It's it's an incredible cast right there. And if, if I could um, also add for a minute there, the whole I had never seen this before. Uh-huh. It's it's 97, so so much of my memory is garbled. So when you brought up Cinderella, I'm just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one with Brandy. And also, I thought Whoopi Goldberg was her fairy godmother. Oh, right. And for some reason, because Whoopi Goldberg, this is me actually interpreting it, because Whoopi Girl- yeah. Goldberg was in so many Muppet episodes oh. and movies, I'm just like, is this like a Muppet combining tale? <laughs> I couldn't remember. And then when Noah Muppets appeared and then the movie started and and Whitney Houston Houston was there, I'm just like, okay, number one, this feels so much more on point. The fact that you suggested this movie as an (laughs) episode. It makes so much sense now. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And then the other one was just like, I guess there's no Muppets. I'm okay with that. (laughs) But (laughs) but that was but that was okay because, you know, I watched it. Fantastic. Um, Cinderella. So there weren't any huge surprises, but that's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, that was that was my experience. Please tell me more about the first time you saw this and 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 what what the experience was. Okay. So in 1997, when this first <laughs> came out, right, I was four. Huh. So I feel like I don't necessarily have specific memories about that particular <laughs> first viewing of Cinderella, but I'm like fairly confident this would be a thing that my mom and dad would be like. Let's let's watch this because it's it was on the uh, wonderful world of Disney's mm-hmm. programming back in the nineties. Right. But I do believe I owned the VHS tape of this, and I think I remember really watching this over and over and over again when I was like five, six, mm-hmm. seven years old. Because like you know, I was just the perfect age for this kind of movie when it first came out. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe subconsciously this was the this was the seed of Whitney Houston being planted at a very young age. Because I, when I was watching this again um, the other day for the first time since the 90s, because mm-hmm. now we you know it's accessible, I was like, wow, Whitney Houston is just amazing in this movie. She's so magical and maybe like mm-hmm subconsciously I took that with me and I carried that with me over the years just like thinking of Whitney as this being that just emanates light and radiates love and positive positivity and warmth so right I think um there was that there was that aspect there but yeah um this was a, a movie that I think for a lot of people in my generation during that particular time like we we really like went for this movie and when it came to disney plus there was such a celebration for it Mm -hmm. to finally be accessible after all these years which is crazy but yeah right yeah and and i actually was surprised that you know you know oh it's on disney plus great i didn't realize it was such a big deal Mm. how you know its availability i mean I I remember hearing that it it had done you know really well. Yeah. Um. Apparently, apparently, it's still like uh, it broke so many records in terms of the numbers for when it was released as the, uh, I guess the Sunday night. It was a, a weekend. You know, the yeah. wonderful world of Disney. And I remember that being just so big. Yeah. And I remember not too long ago they they were trying to do I think it was like Grease Live and, you know, trying to capture some collective coming together to watch something all at once. And it, it's, it's, that record will hold forever because, mm-hmm. you know, access to things and on-demand stuff will just split people, right? you know, in all these different ways. Or, oh, I can watch this later. Cool. So they'll never get the numbers mm-hmm. that that particular thing there. But, but watching this for the first time, you, you said that this may have started your, you know, Whitney, uh, I don't even know how to finish the <laughs> sentence. But... You don't even know what it is. <laughs> no, but 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 at the same time, though, I understand it because she, you, you're right. She is is just there's light coming from her, literally because of you know the special effects, yeah. but also just in every movement that she makes, and also um, her fairy godmother outfit. Of course, she is glowing the right. whole time. Yeah. I remember, I remember too, like as a child, I think when I first watched this movie being like actually a little bit concerned for Whitney, because I was like, wow, that outfit looks like really 
uncomfortable the <laughs> one that she's in like I was already concerned for her well-being even back then but um yeah she's just just so magical and like the the little like swirly sp- sparkles that appear every every time she like moves across yeah. the screen is great it's, it's so um, real yeah this movie it's it's such a it's such a time capsule mm-hmm. of like the late 90s kind of like what you were earlier talking about how it's going to be it, the 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 records that this movie holds mm-hmm. in terms of its viewing power i believe i looked online before we did this i think they said like 60 million people watched yeah. this when it first aired and I was just thinking like oh my god like people different networks and studios would kill for those kinds of numbers because the way in which we consume media nowadays is just so different yeah. so it's such a this movie is such an interesting time capsule a, a preservation of like this this is how like we all collectively used to watch things right. together even though like Yes, they do try to replicate that with these um, live musicals that NBC and Fox have been doing over the past couple of years. But right. it's just not quite the same. <laughs> exactly. And and even so, I, I don't know what it was, but um, speaking of Disney, I remember they had put The Lion King on. And mm. I I'd, I'd put it on there and it was it was it was one of those weekend evenings and I put it on there I'm like, oh, the Lion King's on and I put it on there. and My dad comes in. He's like, you own this on VHS. And I'm like, what is it about it having commercials and you can't pause it that you want to watch this? And I, I don't I think at the at the time it was just like the fact that I had to be paying attention to it. Right. And I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, because I, it is out of my control right now. This is something that someone else is controlling. So I get to watch it, but only on their terms. And yeah. I think there was something about a collective watching experience, even though I was the only one in the room. I'm just like, but now is when everyone's watching it. So let's all watch it together. Exactly. And it's That's- so interesting, too, like the way it's, um you know, seeing it now on Disney Plus, like you could see where the commercial breaks would have been. <laughs> That's fun and de- <laughs> and definitely better than when they try to just put them in there like, you know, oh, we're going to splice ads in here for a movie that's not meant to have those. And it's just like he was in the middle of a sentence. Get your algorithms, you know, better right. or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I one of the things that I, I appreciated about this movie is, again, you know, you talked about being five, six, seven years old, yeah. having the niece that age. I understood why she was watching it constantly. Uh, that, you know, Disney's Cinderella, just very straightforward. And when the movie was kind of wrapping towards, you know, one part of it, I'm just like, there's still like 10 minutes left. I'm really curious because by this point, the Disney movie was over. What's going to happen now? Yeah. So. So, uh, did you have any other, um, did you, did, were you familiar, did, did you watch the other Cinderella or was this your first Cinderella? Oh my gosh. I mean, I do also have memories of watching the original Disney animated Cinderella. I'm not okay. quite sure which one came first, but these two were kind of like in constant VHS tape rotation back in the day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I actually, too, before recording this uh podcast episode with you i i wanted to watch the animated one like in full but then i was like running short on time so i just like started to skim and skip and i was like okay i get the point i get the point so i was like going to key moments and i was like oh wait they did like change a little bit like here and there added this added that um but yeah, especially I was just thinking too, like in given the conceit of your podcast and because there's been so many different iterations of Cinderella, mm-hmm. the way I feel like the way in which you would go about answering your your questions here, it might slightly change depending on which version of the movie you were watching. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, considering the number of versions of Cinderella that there are. And I, I, I really appreciate that you were trying to do your homework and just like covering that. <laughs> yeah. uh, FYI, as of this recording, I guess the other Rogers and Hammerstein's uh, Cinderella is on YouTube for free. 
Oh, so I'm just perfect. like, interesting. So the fact that like, when the movie started, it was like, it was also Rodgers and Hammerstein's. I'm like, oh, interesting. Right. Um, I also happen to know that the one that's free on YouTube is not the right one. So like, you know, if we do this version, if we do the next version, it, yeah. there was the not too long ago when now Disney's doing all these different live action movies. And yeah. so there was that Cinderella that came out not too long ago. I watched um, a clip of it. I, I guess, again, the algorithms in YouTube are just like, oh, you're interested in Cinderella. How about this <laughs> clip from this? Cinderella I'm like oh okay I know what you're doing but stop it um it was the part um where Lily Allen's Cinderella was coming down the stairs and I'm just like right. I'm like she's way too blue for me right now the blue mm. of that particular one for some reason it's just like no it was supposed to be a light paler blue so it's like I have this opinion that really shouldn't matter right. about the dress and and Cinderella but I, I but I want to you know comment there's this Cinderella there is the you know the most recent cinderella there's the the cinderella that we're talking about there's the disney cinderella animated one there's definitely cinderella sequels to that animated one yeah. and there's this version and this version so whatever version you have i'm sure you know if we're talking about these two and we've missed yours it's it's not a slight there's only so much cinderella we can watch before we can uh have our right. conversation yeah, it's like you could have like a whole Cinderella cinematic universe <laughs> breakdown yep. of all the different Cinderellas. But um, yeah, and then there's also like, you know, the like the modern reinterpretations mm -hmm. of Cinderella, like the the Lizzie McGuire, Chad Michael Murray one. Yes! Um, and then they had like versions of that that were made for, I believe, just like TV. Like I think Selena Gomez was in a version. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to remake it again with someone. I don't know. But Cinderella is a like timeless classic mm -hmm. story that keeps being reinvented for, mm -hmm. it seems like, a new generation for whatever right. reason. Right. But yeah. And 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 now I'm trying to like distill it down to a trope because I could talk Pride and Prejudice tropes of just like how often that was remade, how often mm. that's modernized or, or retold in one way or another with a, a spin, as they call it. And that and to me, that's the what was it? The enemies to lovers, if you really distill it. Oh, is, right. is, is there a trope of like, be nice, you'll get money? Oh, that's just, car that's just, wait, hold on. No, that's just, is it karma? Is it, is it basically the concept of this karma? Sure, yeah. I mean, I don't, I guess, was that the original, was that something that was like honed in in the original animated? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And then I, I will, I will want your opinion of this because one of the things that I really liked about this version is yeah. Cinderella stayed because family she said she would never leave her family yeah. and i'm like oh that makes like i know we're supposed to be in the time frame of olden times with the prince and all this other stuff in the small villagey thing mm -hmm. but the fact that she's staying because of a promise she made to her dad is is like it kind of hit me when she yeah. said it. i'm just like oh oh that's something okay yeah i feel like they definitely gave a lot more character like depth to right. not even just Cinderella, but also the prince too. Yep. Because when I was doing my last minute skim of uh, the <laughs> animated version, I was like, where are the scenes with the prince? And like, it's like, I think only two really major, you really only see him like twice in yep. major sequences in the original one. And I was like, oh my God, they definitely like gave the prince more to do in, yep. in this one too. And- yep. Yeah, I, I feel like after my last minute skim and then I like went back and I started watching key moments in this original one. I was like, yeah, this 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 Rogers and Hammerstein version is is really good. Like, I definitely could see why people were like, yeah, this one's so much better than the the Disney original version because it just they just give the characters so much more um, yeah. of a motivation behind why they do the things they do. I mean, he's not a trophy. Yeah. Which is kind of what he feels like in the first one. Again, it's been forever since I saw it, but it's just like, huh? Did he? Did you? Did he speak at all in in when you were skimming through? Did he speak at all? He okay. So 
in you know how in the Rodgers and Hammerstein version like there's like that whole sequence with like Whoopi and Victor Garber and they're like having this back and forth with the son like no you gotta you know we need an heir like in the animated one the prince isn't even in the room when they're having that conversation and classic Disney like the mom is nowhere to be seen Mm. it's just the dad and um, yeah I think the prince is only really in this the ballroom sequence and then um, he's not there when they're trying on the different the the slipper for Cinderella he's not there at all he only appears at the end again when they like get married and that's it yeah and and I'm not remembering oh right he did scream for her to not run away to come back all right so he did he did say something fantastic yeah um although extra points to Prince Christopher yeah. And how he was there for every single fitting. And and I, I that to me, I'm interpreting that is like, no, no, no. He is he is in love with this girl. The second she is found, he's like, awesome, I'm there. I'm mm-hmm. so there. So that's yeah. my interpretation of it. I yeah, I, I, I love that. I think um yeah, I completely agree because by him being there throughout like it seems like, you know, those time lapses, the long fades, that mm-hmm. sequence went on for like a pretty lengthy amount of time in the movie. Yeah. I was like, Okay, yeah, this is this is a guy who's very invested in trying to find this girl, but I also thought it underlied underlied this idea of I mean, the reason why, um, a huge reason why this Whitney Brandy Cinderella was um, monumental and is still monumental is because of the the colorblind casting aspect. Right. And I think right. there's a lot of people like, you know, we could be cynical when we're watching and being like, well, can't the prince clearly see that all these different girls that he is making try on the shoe does not resemble the girl <laughs> that he was dancing with. But right. it's like, well, I, I think you could make the argument that that kind of plays into this idea of colorblind. I'm, this is how I'm looking at the world. I don't see, see color, even though, you know, like that's a very dated way of looking at race. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I think you can make the argument like that's part of the reason why they had him in those scenes as well, because, you know, he wasn't someone who, yes, was taken by her beauty, but it wasn't just all like a physical thing, too. Right, right. But to your point, when Bernadette Peters tried to try on oh my God. <laughs> the glass slipper, I'm just like, hey, Prince, can you can actually speed this up by going like, no, it wasn't you. Yeah. For starters. <laughs> yeah. No. Second, Lionel, you were there and I was dancing with somebody when you were dancing with her. But then again, there were like, f- how many hundreds of oh women there? So how many. many- <laughs> I was also surprised too that they she I completely forgot that that happened in the movie that she for a second there was able to make the shoe fit. I was like, wait, what is happening? It, that surprised me, and I'm just like, what? Where is this gonna go? Yeah. How how far are we gonna move? How much is the slipper going to dictate where this? Uh, all right, by royal decree, we're married now. Yeah, I was like, oh no. <laughs> And then I, yeah, even though I am almost 40 years old, I breathed a sigh of relief. Which she's like, I can't feel my foot. <laughs> Get it off. I'm like, oh, good. You were lying. Yay. It's like, oh, good. They, they found her out before it, it went too far. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, I'm sure she would happily be the bride of, of the prince if it, if it worked out that way. But that was, oh, yeah. that was, that was a good, that was a good, I don't even know what to call it, but that was a good writing moment i don't know yeah the 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 narrative device of the slipper in comparison to the original was interesting because when i was watching um this the whitney brandy one for a Uh second you know when they were like tossing the shoe like around and i was like oh my god is the shoe gonna break like i and i completely forgot that in the animated one the shoe did break yes i was like oh (laughs) like even when i was watching the animated one i was like (gasps) like i i gasped and i was like oh what, wait, what happens now? And then in the animated one, for people who may have forgotten, <laughs> Cinderella like pulls it out of, she yeah. pulls out the spare shoe from like her pocket yeah. and is like, I have the other one. But, you know, in, in this one, it pans out a bit differently. But yeah, yeah. And what's what's great is that, you know, glass slippers are probably incredibly rare yeah. then. <laughs> but can you imagine if it was the ultimate con where, you know, they break the slipper? Oh, I have the second one. And they just made their own. And I'm just like, I'm your princess now. Oh, my gosh. We're finding all these loopholes. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the politics of glass slippers. Yes. A novel. <laughs> oh, man. So 
So going back, um, you, you're watching this movie. Of course, there are some pieces that stick with you. You know, speaking to the actual like conceit of the podcast itself, was there anything in particular? You know, the characters were more fleshed out, which was great. Yeah. Was there anything about their romance that kind of stuck out to you when you were younger or you notice now? Gosh, I don't know if I could have like remembered what stuck out to me when <laughs> and that's I was okay. when I was younger. I mean, well, the obvious would be that and I think being older now, I have more of an appreciation for this more than when I first watched it was what made, you know, again, what made this Disney Rodgers and Hammerstein so special was the colorblind casting and to see uh-huh. um, you know, an African American Cinderella fall in love with an Asian prince who mm-hmm. I feel like in a lot of movies and shows and you could even make the argument still to this day interracial the way interracial relationships are p- portrayed is usually between like a black and white couple right. but to see it portrayed between like a black person and an Asian person was like groundbreaking I'm sure for the time but I feel like still when we look back in tw- in 2021 we're like wow that that was very ahead mm-hmm. of its time so i think that is definitely something that has stuck out to me now watching being older and um i think also too what i didn't realize is the way that they kind of set up their relationship in that that meet cute Right. in the in the town is so important and instrumental in the way that their relationship arcs over the movie but especially how it comes back in the mm-hmm. end because like I definitely did not remember any of those nuances <laughs> so yeah that was really cool to see yeah and 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 given the disney you know coding of everything of course for a brief minute when he was out and about I mean, it's it's kind of Prince and the Popper where he's just like, I just want to be out there right. and doing what I'm doing. But for some reason, I was thinking like, it, it feels like Aladdin where he's able to just kind yes. of move around and not be noticed. Uh-huh. So it's it's very, and then the opposite is that, you know, Aladdin becomes a prince and then this prince is a prince. So it's, right. it's way too much. Like, okay, Diana, Disney does not own the concept of royalty and <laughs> yeah <laughs> so come back it's not all a disney thing but I, I just thought it was pretty interesting and then i read in the trivia i guess one of the la- a lamp is somewhere in the movie in in, oh. in there so i i'm just like okay now disney's doing that thing again so maybe they are messing with me that way yeah i mean and... disney loves their easter eggs so oh, yeah. and this was like made in the 90s like aladdin yeah. came out earlier that decade so it it makes sense it fits Oh, thank goodness for saying that to me. So now I don't feel as a little bit like manipulated. As yeah. before. <laughs> Turns out I was manipulated. <laughs> yeah. And here we are all these years later and it still stays with me. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Okay. So uh, one of the notes that I wanted to make sure I said was um, Whoopi Goldberg squeaking in this movie oh, man. was fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Just every time. I mean, she was the stereotypical concept of the the queen. You need it was it was her. She's like, we need an heir. And he, right. and while her husband agreed, he was just like, you know, it's it's it's, you know, let's see what happens. And, and it, I think he's not too concerned about it. But, mm-hmm. you know, I guess when you're royalty, all you have is like, we have to maintain our power. Let's, uh, <laughs> right. let's get a, let's get an air going. Right. And also I want you to be happy, but also, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I, I do like, I do like her as the queen and uh, Victor Garber is the king. They were really sweet. Yeah. They were such uh they were such a nice couple for sure. And right. it's, it's interesting too. Cause I think I remember reading, in the Shondaland a couple years ago did like a retrospect like oral history about this movie and I think when they initially pitched this to Whoopi Whoopi had passed because like I I think she was busy or something but she said if you end up like need like you can't find anyone you could always come back to me and so they had booked someone but then that person kind of something happened so then they went back to Whoopi Okay. Thankfully, which um, you know, she's so she's so great in right. this movie. 
Agreed. And and also uh, looking into the behind the scenes stuff, it was, uh, you know, Whitney Houston is an executive producer on this. Yes, she is. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess originally the idea was for her to be Cinderella, but because it was being developed and, and there were delays eventually, you know, she was, you know, she thought that she had aged out of the role, right. which, you know, that that happens sadly and and that that kind of breaks my heart but i i love that she's like no 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 we continue and now brandy and and so and then brandy said you know you know i guess it was uh brandy who said like well if she's the fairy godmother again imdb trivia i don't know how much of this is accurate but if it is yeah. accurate it's amazing and i will yeah. i love it that's that's very accurate and i think if i could shoehorn a little like whitney into this <laughs> conversation i, I- <laughs> love it I, I, think, I demand it I think that's also part of the reason why I really wanted to talk about Cinderella because I feel like when we talk about Whitney Houston it mm-hmm. usually ends up being a very like sad conversation that's mm. marred by like how it ended and the tragedy of her life right. but I feel like in spite of all of that there there's so much to celebrate in terms of the work that she gave us and um, I think this particular part in her career when she was doing stuff like Cinderella and then I think about like about a year or so after this she lends her voice for the Prince of Egypt soundtrack where she Mm -hmm. sang with Mariah Carey when you believe and then like um, about a year or so later she starts getting into producing specifically with like children's programming a lot of people don't know this but like Whitney Houston was a producer of Princess Diaries and she also uh, produced uh, the Princess Diaries 2 and the Cheetah Girls and I feel like a lot of people like because this is also around the time too, like late 90s throughout the 2000s or when things like really started to take a turn for Whitney people forget like this really lovely aspect of her career where she was like venturing into being a producer specifically for children's programming and I think if I'm, I may might be projecting here but I feel like part of the reason why she did that was because around um, in 1983 she gave birth to her only daughter Bobby mm-hmm. Christina and you know our, Bobby Christina and I are actually we would have been the same age so oh. I feel like that if you were like around her daughter's age, like we were definitely like um, we benefited. We were the generation that benefited from like Whitney having a daughter and Whitney therefore wanting to start being part of projects that her daughter could enjoy. So mm-hmm. I don't know why I said all of this, but I just wanted to say that, well, that this is part of the reason why I wanted to to talk about this movie, just to uphold this part of her legacy in a positive way. So when you when you were first of all. You don't know why I did that. I'm so glad you did that. <laughs> so I can always go on a Whitney tangent. So you just got to reel me back in. <laughs> but then I would just be doing a dis- disservice to everybody. I know. <laughs> uh, um, w- so when you said that, like, I-, I didn't I didn't know so much of that, like, you know, executive producer on all of those projects and, and going into. OK, so when you mentioned that. I think I keep thinking about like all of these little trivia things, just like uh, this person took on this role because their kid said that, you know, oh, dad, you have to take this role. And, right. and, and it's always just like some middling project where it doesn't make any sense and everything like that. The fact that you said that it was, you know, she had a daughter and she started doing all of these, you know, th- first of all, it was quality that came out of Whitney Houston putting yeah. like this. And, and it was just like, you know, so much better than like some random cameo in a you know another marvel movie where it's just like yeah i wanted to put myself in there because this is something like they only do action movies with like lots of violence so i've decided oh this one i can bring my kid to and it's it's never it's never as meaningful as well how about this in my head what that that's not as meaningful as what you just described right now so that (laughs) and i'm thinking of like her fostering the next generation of talent yes because if you look at brandy and if you look at, well, I, I don't know. I mean, she did an executive, she executive produced, you know, The Princess Diaries, which also on your list. So let's just put that out into the universe yes. for now and then <laughs> and then put it and then and then talk about it a little bit later. Um, and then you said the Cheater Girls. And I'm just like, oh, Raven Simone. Right. She was a child actress. You know, I mean, she was older when she did that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like opportunities you know to get to mm-hmm. especially as a as a child actress there's so much potential for something to just fly off the rails if you don't have good guidance and mentorship so right 
kind of kind of amazing right there i know I'm, she's I'm, so cool i mean i just i'm getting chills <laughs> she's here on my shirt in in the in the zoom room that we're in she's here <laughs> Well, also, there's there's a poster behind you. Yes, there's if, a poster behind me. If that's not a record. <laughs> yes. And um, and I I will also say that since since I reached out to you, I have had I will always love you in my head sporadically since we're recording right now, and it will continue onward. Yeah. After we're done recording, because for sure, as it should, because <laughs> great song, and then. Oh my god! I'll put in the show notes your Diva Dailies. Oh uh, my god, the Bodyguard the, episode, the Bodyguard just... Saga episodes that I did for <laughs> Diva Dailies were made with great blood, sweat, and tears, but all for Whitney, of course. Yeah, um, and it, it is amazing, amazing. So okay, um... but it's interesting that you bring up her her mentorship because if anyone who's listening to this wants to um, venture into the YouTube rabbit hole of Whitney Houston, um, there's like great behind the scenes footage of Whitney and Brandy in the recording studio singing oh. impossible. And it's just like so lovely and funny to watch. And um, I was watching a, a little bit of a round table reunion with the original cast of Cinderella. And they had referenced this mm-hmm. moment of being like, that moment is so great. Like seeing you and Whitney during that time. And she's like guiding you and encouraging you. It's just like, Oh, Real life fairy godmother. Yes. Oh, ah, there's those chills again. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so good. And it's like it's in the movie, and then it's outside the movie, and it it yeah. This this doesn't just feel like a like a a project. It feels like just a something larger. And yeah. and here we are, you know, talking about you and how you watched it, and you you have this you know ongoing legacy of it. You know, just in your in your psyche. Right. And she's on my shirt still in 2021. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> is it a soft, uh, soft fabric as well? Yes, it is. It is nice, Feels light, like... and soft. So I c- it could like just like get me through this recording, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> feels like a hug. Yes, it feels like a warm, encouraging hug. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I mean, I am actually curious if, if people like have no concept of cin- the Cinderella story. I mean, that is one of i believe a cinderella story is the name of one of the cinderella movies that like <laughs> yeah i think so i think that was the lizzie mcguire chad michael right. murray one thank you thank yeah. you okay i was about to say like i'm i'm gonna accidentally like i think one time i i named off two former disney like actresses and i'm just like oh my god did i mix one up with the other oh my god i feel like such a bad person because I, I can't recognize stars well it turns out one was in one of them and the other one was in the sequel i'm like yay oh. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I was right. I'm not going to say them now because, of course, now I'll not remember them and I'll just accidentally insult some other Disney star that was never in a Cinderella movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> no worries there. Okay. So one of the other things that I thought um, you had you had mentioned um, the Shondaland when I was going through trivia. When I was watching this, my first thought was these costumes, it feels like Bridgerton. And oh, then right. I was yeah. so it was just the bright colors of everything. Just like here is this this, you know, this time frame and these bright colors, you know, not just on the stepsisters, um, which actually was meant to I, I mentioned highlight the fact that they were ridiculous in the realm of all these women who are trying really hard to just fit in. But right. they're they're standing out, you know, the, the the bright green and then like the the oh, shoot. I can't remember that. Was it um, was it a pink? I think it was a pink and even yeah. the feathered hats and something like that in the beginning. And I'm just like, wow, it feels like Bridgerton because of the bright colors and everything. And then I read the trivia. Same costume designer. Oh, wow. OK. Well, nice to and know the- that they're still working. <laughs> yes. And then also I'm just like, thank goodness. Again, I'm not just imagining this whole thing. So it's it's it, it I love it when there's a through line. <laughs> yes, just colorful across the board, mm-hmm. both in its mm-hmm. casting and in its costume design. Right, right exactly. Um, so I thought that was kind of a fun aside. Um, you had mentioned, you know, with Disney 1950s Disney, this one, you could answer this differently if you were talking about the different movies. But for Cinderella 1997, 
this couple, this prince and this oh, okay. this Cinderella, when did they fall in love? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I like I have my notes here. You're pulling out <laughs> notes. I have my notes here um because I just never trust myself to just speak like eloquently on on mic, but I'm not going to read directly from the notes. But when I was rewatching it like the just like the key moments for their relationship again, I feel like this might be a bit controversial. But can you make the argument that they fall in love at different points in the movie? Can of you course. say, I feel like he falls for her first before she falls for him? Absolutely. Okay. 100%. I want to live in this world where it's just like, bing, 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 bing. It's 100% <laughs> between the two of them. Actually, no, I don't want to live in that world. That would be kind of scary, actually. That would be very intense. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, no, we can go analytical. But no, this is this is not this is not controversial at all. Oh, okay. unless you want it to be, in which case, oh, oh no, my god, <laughs> please continue. I need to. I don't know, I need... Sometimes you know you never know with like Disney purists. I don't know if there's like Cinderella <laughs> stands. They're like, no, they fall in love when they first meet each other. Bah! But no. um, I was there I a feel... musical cue involved? Ooh, I it's mean, okay if there wasn't. Please continue. I feel like. Okay, here's my thing. I feel like the prince is definitely more of a romantic than Cinderella is. Because thinking mm-hmm. about his character motivation in this version of Cinderella, his whole yeah. thing uh, his whole thing is he wants to fall in love on his own terms. Whereas right. I feel like Cinderella's arc doesn't like necessarily involve this like grand romantic love that she has been envisioning ever since she was a child like I for me I didn't get that that was this Cinderella's like motivation absolutely which I found like really refreshing and I was like oh my god wow this is so good (laughs) I mean there's an entire song about her talking about how when she's in her corner, she can just right. imagine when she is, and then cue all of these different scenarios that she's imagining herself in. Yeah, like she, Mama wants to travel. She's yep. not dreaming about being a housewife or falling. I mean, like maybe she does reference like falling in love or whatever, but it's like if you look at that song, that's essentially kind of like her I wish song in, mm-hmm. in the movie. And a mm-hmm. lot of it doesn't involve like, her being tied down to a man. It's like, I want to be like jungle safariing and <laughs> traveling right. here, traveling yes. there. So it's like she, you know, she want like, I feel like for me, this Cinderella, Brandy Cinderella was about like wanting the the freedom to go out and see the world for her, see the world for herself, like beyond like her little corner. You know what right. I mean? And right. Yeah. So I'll, Agreed. I'll, I'll, I'll end it there. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have to end it there. But I was just going to add to that. I'm just like, and that will add to my next part of the segment when we talk about what happens next. But I want to keep going with this. Oh, OK. So yeah. I was going to continue because when you think about how this movie ends with mm-hmm. uh, Whitney mm-hmm. Houston singing like Impossible, right? Right. So right. for me, this idea of, um, you know, fairy godmother telling Cinderella like anything is possible that doesn't necessarily stem from this idea of like possibility in terms of like you could fall in love with anyone. It's just like possibility in terms of like if you like go out and put yourself like out into the world and like pursue the things that you want to do, Cinderella, mm-hmm. then anything is possible. Like that for me was like this Cinderella's arc. And it just so happened that it also involved like her, I guess, like her sense of in- her sense of adventure and her um, sense of self worth outside of her her home, outside of her home environment, involved like also getting falling in love with this guy. But I really don't think at the end of the day, this Cinderella needed pr- the Prince Charming to get out because when we think about too, at the very end of the the movie, when he yeah. breaks into the room, she's not there. Yeah. She she has she's freed not. herself from the room, and when she frees herself from the room, that is when they have their like. I guess like final meet cute moment that is when for me she falls in love with the prince yes oh my god so the fact that you said that I'm I'm going to hit that because you are absolutely correct because we agree with each other this means it is 100% <laughs> yes um no you're you're right because 
absolutely he's a romantic because he has the freedom to be a romantic. Yes. And so she is very much like, I made this promise to my father. Family is the most important thing. It's it's like she's in a, you know, <laughs> it's like she's in a Fast and Furious movie <laughs> where it's all about family. But um, no, it's, it's true because her fairy godmother even says to her, you can, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's you, you know, like, this is not what your father wanted. And I'm just like, oh, wow, r- way to really hit it, you know, yeah. because, because it's true. You made this promise to him. You made this promise to him years ago. Uh-huh. And if he saw like the way that things had evolved, he would, of course, be about you and 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 you again it's like it's like reading a fortune and it's just like oh i i interpreted it wrong right Uh oh dang it (laughs) yeah but it's like no dad i promise and it's just like no no become a lawyer open it up to interpretation i promise that family first of all you're allowed to make family yeah so it's very you, you can still make this promise to your father while simultaneously not you know, doing whatever it is with your step siblings, right. kind of thing. You but- can remove yourself from toxic family members. That was the- <laughs> that's uh, one of the underlying messages of this Cinderella movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> That exactly because again that was the only thing that was stopping her. I'm just like, oh, it's fascinating that they decided to go that realm because yeah. in 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 the older ones, it just seems like she she's property, right? In a way, or she's too young to be able to go off. Like, what resources does she have? Of course, um, and and yes, in the beginning when they're in the courtyard and the prince is out doing his, I want to be among the 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 people right. and i want to not be a prince and i want people to interact with me like they don't know i'm a prince mm-hmm. he he is very quick to start being just like oh those royals you know blah 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 let's commiserate together right. and then he turns around and looks at her and he's just like boom bang yeah like moment again there it's it, the movie's trying to tell something he is he is smitten by her mm-hmm. and i think by the end of that scene because boom he's smitten with her but then they really start to connect, of course, in the in the very uh, like the the five year old you can get it. It's just like, do you ever feel like you're just yeah. like trapped and <laughs> you just want to run away? And yeah, me too. I'm a prince and I want to run away. I'm abused by my family and I want to run away. You know, it's it's yeah. two different things, but you're connecting on a on a very basic level. Right. Of just like, hey, large random sentence. Me too. Right. I also love music. Anyways, uh, <laughs> musical cue. <laughs> looking at each other <laughs> oh we have to separate Ooh, yeah 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 and i and i think it's when he gets into the carriage he's just like completely engulfed by her because his anger towards his mother about the ball is compounded with the fact that he's just like but there is a thing there is a moment so like he is just i think he's gone for her by that point even though he doesn't know who she is right and that's that's so that's where i agree with you just like bam romantic in the beginning and and absolutely at the end the fact that they changed it up to where she decided to go off and live her such life such a key and moment thanks. oh such a key moment and just yeah she's not locked in the back and he opens it he opens it up and she's there it's like no she there's no one in there yeah she freed but herself she did she did oh, walk out Cinderella is so good <laughs> Right, right. And and when, when the shoe was being, like, happening, like, she probably has no idea what's happening. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. I was watching her. She's like, oh, my God, she's packing her things. Yeah. <laughs> she's on the go. She is. She is. And I'm just like, where is this going to go? What's going to happen? But see, like, doesn't, doesn't, that, that, she got doesn't that underlie, though, like, the fact that she was willing to go underlie the fact that, yeah. like, she clearly wasn't, like, not to say that she, like, you know, didn't like the guy, but she didn't need the guy. Because she was going to go mm-hmm. with or without him. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And then I briefly thought, oh, my God, what if she just leaves and the prince never finds her? Is like, is she going to come back years later and then we get her happily ever after then? I'm I'm a, I'm a young girl. Where's the happily ever after with the prince? This is Cinderella. What's happening right now? Oh, is she going to do all that traveling? And then, No. <laughs> and then he just sees her out in the front. I'm like, oh, OK, good. Oh, really? Okay, good. <laughs> Not that it necessarily needs to end that way, right. but I need a resolution of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, yes, yes. Uh, when when they reconnect again, and and he just says to her with her back turned to him, like, "Oh man, those royals," and she doesn't even miss a beat and said, "I'm sure they're going somewhere important." Yes, just, so Aw. good. The tie-in to the meet cute. Oh, so yes. good. Yes, Gosh, they and knew what just, they were doing. 
Yeah, and 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 not to mention that it, it's great that it gets to be solidified because this person he met that started him off on solidifying his marrying for love and her coming through her own arc of I need to go out and do my own thing, and then the ball, and then they get to have like the fairy tale moment. Mm-hmm. I mean gorgeous outfits and being dressed up in this way where you look fabulous um it's cinderella i want to have that in a cinderella movie right and i think it's interesting too um something that i like completely forgot is in that whole like ballroom sequence there is a moment where she gets the chance to talk to the prince's mom and (gasps) she kind of has this like bout of insecurity and she like books it for the hills and then Mm -hmm. fairy godmother Whitney pops up and you know tries to offer her like moral support words of motivation you know like you got this get back in there and it's like oh well like that definitely did not happen in the animated movie and I thought like that moment specifically was like a really nice way of like adding a little bit more like nuance to the character because that is like you know real like if we were trying to suspend disbelief but also at the same time like try to be realistic about the situation like if i was cinderella i'd be like uh, 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 uh i don't know like i feel like i'm not supposed to be in this room a bit of imposter syndrome so that seems like mm-hmm. a very real thing that she would be experiencing in that moment is like a little bit of insecurity she's not going to be like a thousand percent confident throughout this entire night so right i liked that too. right Sure. I mean, it's it's kind of a bummer that this magical moment is interrupted by the outcome of reality. Right. Like, so who are you, so tell us about your parents. Uh, I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, if you were me, just say like, um, so my father is dead. And then you 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 weigh on that to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then you change the topic. Yeah. <laughs> the end. Just pivot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, it's, oh my goodness. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just reliving the magic right now. And then, yeah, in the end, trying to find her, they meet, I, you know, I'll say it again. Definitely agree with you. That's, that's, so not controversial at oh, all. Great. Okay. You know, Phew. Different, different points, different points. It's, 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 see, and the question is when, when do they fall in love? That's why I say it, but it's really, when do you think they fell in love? Right. Because, we're going to have so many opens to interpretations. It's just like, nah, when that when that shoe was being, you know, kept from him, he was 100 percent in at that moment because like, how can this thing be taken away from me if you break the shoe? I don't know. Right. Yeah. That's not what I came up with. But if you said that, I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, sure. <laughs> Works for me. It's basically like, please show your work. Why do you think this? Yeah. Oh, OK, great. <laughs> it's like, well, I have notes here. I have receipts. So, <laughs> yeah. Yep, and that's okay. I, I I I accept I accept your expense and I will make sure it's on your next yeah. paycheck. <laughs> uh okay, so we've looked at what the movie has told us. Tell me, what do you think happens next? Oh, okay. So I feel like Chris and Cinderella are gonna go like traveling together. Bam. Like they are gonna because I was thinking too, like in their conversation when they were dancing. He was like, when he was asking her, like, oh, have I met you from somewhere? He mentions, like, the mountains. Like, did I meet you in the (laughs) mountains? She's like, I I like mountains. So I feel like they will probably go to the mountains at some point. And then, like, all of those little things she was imagining that she she was going to be in her corner. She is somehow going to be able to, like, live that out for herself. Yes. So that's what I imagine. Absolutely. I I also think that it's great that... um, the map of this world is the mountains yeah. and the lake. Yeah. Very vague. And I'm like, it's perfect. Of course. Absolutely. All of these things. So yes, not only that, but you're right. You're right. And that's, that is what came into my head. I, I watched the wedding and I was actually a little sad okay. because the wedding was his his parents on one side and Lionel is off to the other side and she didn't have although she did have her fairy godmother yeah. her presence was there right. i was very very sad and on on the fact that she had no family okay now granted for comedic effect her step family <laughs> was trying to crawl into the gates to yes. be there 
And I do have a little bit of um, sympathy that she's like, if any family for family's sake, she I'm glad that she's finally over that. Right. Um, so so but it, but again, it's I think that that is going to my sadness is going to make it so she is going to feel my sadness and do the following things accordingly to make me feel better. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's going to be yeah, exactly. She's so basically like, it's going to be a growing family. So ah. yes, yes, uh, the queen has stated that an heir is needed. And so in my mind, they they will have three children. Oh, wow. The specifics. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason. I mean, I thought of an heir and a spare and I'm just like, no, but they're not doing it for the heir and the spare. This is a family that they're creating. Yeah. And this is something that that she she has. And not to mention, she is one of three as well, even though it was a step family. So that's that's not that's not so far out there. Um, but I am on board with the traveling. Yeah. That that she was singing when she wanted to be out, she is going to do that. As, you know, and, and correct me if I was wrong there, but I thought it was interesting that she talked about being a huntress, but then she lost her weapon and then she was up looking at the the thing that she was hunting and then it didn't i'm just like oh that's really nice that she's like i want to be a huntress but i'm not gonna kill anything yeah uh, <laughs> <Self-awareness>. <laughs> yeah exactly where where it's just like oh and and for some reason it's not gonna work out that way but i'll still have my adventure so i think that's going to be the ultimate metaphor she's going to go out she's going to have her adventures and it's not going to be quite what she imagined but it's going to be even better Right. Yeah. Much like she left, she was going to go live her life the way that she eventually let go of her family and she was going to live a life. And then because the prince found her, it's better than she had imagined. And I think I think it's with everything that she went through. I think that's what she should have. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. Eh. Look at us. I mean, we're doing it. I mean, (laughs) I mean, it's it's a very basic, you know, again, karma is what I said before, mm-hmm. but it's just this character, you know, she's not the sticky, sweet singing to animals, you know, version of that. But instead, she's got she's got sadness, but she wants a family and she, you know, promises and she's had a loss. Mm-hmm. So so why wouldn't we give her all that she dreams of? Right. I feel like this movie did ultimately a really good job in making you like root for them to get together and not because it's just like well he's the prince and she's cinderella like they actually gave you more to root for more of a reason for them to be together so that it made sense in the end so like when it does happen you're not maybe as cynical that as you were when you Mm -hmm. watched the animated one like they give you a it it, their love seems justified their union seems justified by the end so exactly oh man just yay Yay for them both! Yeah, and and the and and the and the, and the king and the queen and the kingdom and and all of the people. Let's let them let them do the th- the thing, right? The love yes. thing. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, oh, that felt really good. Oh, good. <laughs> that just felt so good. Just like yes, and the happiness and the thing and the songs and the Whitney. Yes, and the Whitney and the- of it all ends on her <laughs> like high note, of course cut to black literally like literally she's in the sky (laughs) yes looking down at everyone while hitting these like ridiculous notes and cut to black (laughs) exactly exactly uh and it's um it's wonderful that it is available so yes if you have access to disney plus please go watch this you'll feel really good although i i will say i watched this on my tablet and there is a dancing sequence and i'm just like spinning and they're spinning and they're spinning like oh i don't feel so good uh (laughs) a lot of spinning so uh so if you are uh slightly prone to to that kind of uh uh um what is it nausea uh, (laughs) make note of that in the dance sequence but 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 other than that fantastic movie yeah it's great (laughs) It's great. Thank you so much for bringing this to the show of and course. all of your notes and your opinions and your love of Whitney. Always here. If you ever Yay. do another Whitney movie, you know who to call. I'm always down to talk about Whitney Houston, of course. Oh, my God. We are going to do this. So so be be prepared. Always. To... OK, great. <laughs> great, great, great. All right. So um, there's only so much that I can produce at a time so for those of you who would want to hear more of your amazing Whitney opinions or just any type of you know television or pop culture or movies you have your YouTube show and your podcast tell 
tell everyone where they can find them. Yeah, so um, you can find me on YouTube. I'm in my humble opinion. That's I N N, and then my humble opinion. And then you can also um, listen to me gab about more divas. You know, like Whitney, and then there's so many other ladies we talk about um, on my podcast called Diva Dailies, where you can find wherever you listen to your podcast. It's a great time. Absolutely is. Um, I I fully endorse that. Like I said, I had listened to a few episodes, oh, um, even in preparation. And it's just like, where where are more? Oh, good, good. There <laughs> it is, right there. If you hit subscribe, yes. excellent. Yeah. So check that out. Uh, thank you again for joining me. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And uh, until next time, may your aftermath be happy. Mm-hmm.